Hello friends, uh, we are talking about uh, gene mapping and especially the gene mapping in eukaryotic systems. Now in this uh, video we will be talking about a very very uh, unconventional type of gene mapping and the important, uh, importance of this type of technique in gene mapping. It is called marker assisted selection. Now the marker assisted selection is not the conventional type of gene mapping methods but a more, uh, um, much more amount this marker assisted selection is used in the plant breeding industry and in the plant industry in the plant seed industries. Okay. Sorry. Now in plant industries we need seeds for the breeding. Now in plant breeding we have different steps. Now in this case marker assisted selection or this type of selection is uh, mostly utilized and nowadays it is very much helpful to generate higher quality seeds from the parental uh, plants. Okay. So here we will be talking about uh, the plant breeding a little bit about plant breeding and also we will be talking about the marker assisted selection or MAS it is called mass or marker assist assisted selection now before going into detail about marker assisted selection and relating it with gene mapping we will be talking about little bit about plant breeding and normal phenotypic selection now plant breeding means uh, simply we are having we must have two different uh, type of uh, plants one is a uh, two parental plants so parent one and parent two now those two plants will be crossed will be uh, crossed with each other to generate the f1 plants so very simple and very begin uh, so let us first talk about a very basic view of plant breeding and how plant breeding is done and how we select our desirable trait from the existing one okay so this in this particular video we'll be focusing on the basic process of plant breeding then we'll relate this with uh, in the next video we'll be relating this uh, basic process of plant breeding or uh, phenotypic plant plant breeding or phenotypic assist, uh, assisted uh, plant breeding with uh, marker assisted plant breeding and what we'll be seeing the difference between them okay now let us say here we are ha we are having two different parents we are having parent one and we are having parent two if we cross those two parents it will generate a uh, offspring and this offspring that it generates is F1 offspring. Now this F1 offspring that is generated after uh, the cross between parent 1 and parent 2 this F1 is selfed or uh, it is uh, we allow them for selfing. Now what is selfing means we take the plant from F1 and cross with F1 generation plants. For example here in, in case of simple phenotypic uh, selection so the selection we are talking about this selection is called phenotypic selection phenotypic selection in this selection we will be taking our plants of our desired traits so we will be taking some plants which are having some good quality right for example say these two plants this plant is very much salt, uh, salty uh, condition tolerant and say this plant is very much drought tolerant so the tolerant uh, genes that are present we don't bother about genes but we are by looking at this type of plants and their functionality we take up those type of plants for example say this plant too is having much more much uh, higher quality uh, food for example if it, uh, these are rice plants then this P2 is having longer uh, rice grains uh, rice grains okay so we we'll select this two and cross it to make this F1 but remember in this kind of phenotypic selection procedure or conventional procedure it is also called conventional plant breeding procedure so let it uh, let me write it it is also called conventional conventional uh, plant breeding procedure now in this procedure both the parent plants that we have taken both of them must be of homozygous type so both of them are of homozygous type either homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive so let us take it so these plants must be pure or true breeding plants okay so you must know these terms what is true breeding what is pure plants and all this thing true breeding plant means both of them are of homozygous origin so say this is caps t caps t and this is small t small t so both of them are true breeding plant okay I emphasize on this term true breeding that means both of them are homozygous so they are not blended 
their homozygous of their trait. Now here after crossing them it generates F1 generation. Now all the uh, offspring of this F1 generation must have caps T small t according to the Mendelian inheritance. So both all of them will be of heterozygous type. Now what we do here we take F1 plants, two F1 plants and we cross them together. So one F1, so a one F1 is crossed with another F1 plants. All of them are heterozygous. So heterozygous crossing and then it will generate F2 plants. Okay. This is a conventional way of breeding. We select them and cross uh, the plants between F1 generation to get F2 generation plant. Now this F2 generation plant we are having mix up uh, combinations. For example, if a caps T small t met with another caps T small t, the probability we can get also caps T caps T and also we can get small t small t. Then this F2 generation will again crossed with F2 generation. So this uh, things continue. All these things continues. So F2 generates, then F2 is again crossed with another F2, F3 generates, crossed with another F3 and so on. So this is the process. These are the process, right? Say, these are the process like that. Okay, F1, F1 crossed, F2 generates, F2 is crossed with another F2, F3 generates, F3 is crossed with another F3 and so on. We'll move on. Now, as we move on through the line, what it it is getting us, it is getting uh, the percentage of homozygous nature is increasing. So as we are going this way, as we are going downwards, the percentage of homozygous plant increasing. Okay, so the percentage of homozygous plant are increasing. Now this homozygous plant percentage are increased from 50% till 98% so from 50% till 98% we end up with homozygous plant okay now what we require homozygous plant because we cannot make seeds very very important we cannot make seeds from any heterozygous type of plant because it, it was it will be very very unstable so we need to generate homozygous plant before we take up seed before we harvest those those plants and take out seed from them okay so this is very important to increase the homozygosity inside the plant system inside the plant generations so if we look at the pedigree of this plant this is a simple breeding procedure and the procedure of increasing the homozygosity is simply by making selfing in each generation we are increasing the homozygous nature by just selfing in each generation so up to F5 or F6 generation, this kind of selfing goes on. After that, how we select these things? After that, how we select? Now remember, we have taken some very important characters. We have taken very, very important characters. Characters like the grain, characters here like the rice, the quality of rice. Now after this F1 and F2 cross, we, we, have, we have taken this in this F2 cross, we are having many different type of plants. Among those plants, we will be looking for phenotypic expressions for example the plant which is uh, very much tolerant drought tolerant the plant which is producing that superb quality seeds will sort those plants out and kill other plants right so suppose in this f2 generation we have variations of plants and in those variation some of them are producing very superior quality seeds and also drought tolerant and some are not so we'll be taking only those seeds the quality of which we require then again cross those and then get F3. Now again in F3 we'll be selecting the plants based on our need. Based on the needs we can visualize. Now here comes the term phenotypic selection. So we are selecting plants based on phenotypic markers. Now what are phenotypic markers? Phenotypic markers, so let me write it here. We are selecting based on phenotypic markers. Phenotypic markers are those type of markers or those properties of plants that we can easily visualize by just looking at them. For example, the flower color, say, the food type, okay, or say, uh, the, qual the quantity or the yield. So these things are these phenotypic markers which we can just visualize, which we, which we can just get by uh, planting those plants for one or two generations. So it could be it could be food quality, 
it could be yield it could be uh, drought tolerance and all these things we require these things we can actually know these things by just looking at few generation of plants and we can select plants based on this type of qualities now remember in any kind of breeding what we will look for we will look for best qualities right so when we can get the best quality we select those plants and make them crossed with each other then again we get another generation and make them crossed again and so on will go on finally get our desired product after if five or if six generation will go in this procedure then after f6 generation we'll be checking those plants which we have selected till now and we'll be checking that whether those plants can grow in multiple locations or not in multiple climate in multiple environment or not this is called the multiple location testing and after that we'll be looking for the yield and productivity of that particular plant now if everything works fine then we'll take those plants and finally we will go we will give the time for the plants to grow then harvest those plants and take up seeds from them and those seeds will be marketed so this is a procedure of conventional plant breeding based on phenotypic selection and phenotypic marker or phenotypic marker assisted selection okay now we are not actually focused we are not actually uh, very much focused on this phenotypic expression marker but this thing is required to know that's why i have discussed it we'll be interested in this marker assisted selection and the marker we are talking here are not phenotypic markers these are genotypic markers or genotypic markers now remember there are two different types one is phenotype another one is genotype phenotype means the expression that we can see now genotype is simply the genetic makeup of that particular phenotype and the expression of genotype is the result like phenotype right so we need to find we can find genotype only if we look at the gene of the particular trait right so we need to dig inside the gene to look whether it is doing some important thing or not whether the plant we are talking about is uh, carrying our, our desired character or not then select those plants and discard other plants right so here now we'll be talking about the marker assisted selection based on the genotypic markers okay so these are the conventional way of crossing and we are also having a different type of conventional crossing this is also called back crossing method like this type of method back crossing method is also important it is also based on the phenotypic selection markers which can give us better results which can help us to achieve homozygosity pretty earlier how simply we can cross this uh, parental generations so say in in case of back cross testing parent 1 and parent 2 are crossed and it will provide the f1 generation the f1 generation it provides we take this f1 generation and we make a cross of f1 generation with a parental generation which is p1 for example say in this case then it generates f2 generation and f2 generation is again crossed with uh, p1 generation and so on uh, so this f2 generation is giving a rise to simply a back cross back cross means a new f1 progeny when when a new f1 progeny is crossed with a parental progeny we call it a back link or a back cross simply like this f1 is crossed with the previous parental type p1 we call it a back cross and the new progeny they provide us is also called back cross progeny 1 you can also write it so you make a cross with again parent it will give rise to back cross progeny 2 and again it will be crossed to parent and it will give us back cross progeny 3 and so on we can generate many back cross progenies now this back cross progenies as we are repeatedly crossing them with one of the parental type which is carrying our phenotypic marker remember this p1 we are crossing each of the new progeny with this p1 or parent 1 because this parent 1 progeny is carrying our desired phenotypic marker because here the p1 is carrying our desired phenotypic marker so we know that if we are crossing more with p1 it is a chance for the uh, attachment of the genes from p1 to the new progeny will be more so we'll be getting closer to our desired product that's why we are crossing this new progeny with p1 many a times during the course and finally we get our product and this also will help us to generate homozygosity 
and finally we get the homozygous plants with our desired trait which is placed in this P1. So remember in any kind of this uh, plant breeding and plant selections what we are emphasizing on we are emphasizing on some of the important traits some important traits that we can quantify that we can see that you can visualize by your eye okay and we'll be selecting plants like that so here this p1 plant is very important we have selected this plant because we know the characteristic of the plant is very very important so we need to increase the number of this p1 plant in the population how just by making a back crossing analysis like that what we can get we can incorporate more of p1 genes into the new progenies as a result we can develop new progenies which is much more resembling the genotypic makeup like p1 so as a result we can tell that we can increase the quality like p1 inside population okay so that's how we can give rise to some important desired product we needed okay so these are the techniques of conventional breeding in the first case we have discussed this is called the conventional breeding using true breeding analysis and the second type is again a conventional back cross breeding we, where we have seen the importance of back cross and finding a particular progeny which carries our desired product okay but in the next video we will be emphasizing on genotypic marker assisted selection where we will be seeing instead of this phenotypic markers we will emphasize on some locus inside the uh, DNA locus inside the chromosome of plants which carries many important characteristics and those characteristics can be quantified we call those locus and the part of the genes quantitative trait loci or quantitative trait loci or QTL sorry QTL quantitative trait loci loci means the region of a gene region of a genome region of a DNA now inside that point region of the chromosome where we can quantitate some traits traits means some features like like height like uh, drought tolerance salt condition tolerance like the grain the food food quality and all these things it could be quantitatively measured are called the quantitative trait now those quantitative traits are placed in different locus in the chromosome so if we think this is the chromosome of the plant for example one of the chromosome and we can find some region which is responsible for the drought to tolerance for that for plant so we call this locus a quantitative trait locus for drought tolerance now those genetic region those genes that are present in this particular loci we can take them as a genotypic marker now we can scan for the plant uh, generations to find this type of markers now if we want to select this type of marker we need to emphasize or amplify the number of this type of markers in plant population we are having different techniques we can also go with the, this kind of technique but simply just uh, du during the part where we require the phenotypic expression and phenotypic selection here we'll be doing it using genotypic selection and in the other case we'll be doing it here using back cross using this genotypic marker how we can achieve this in the next video we'll be discussing okay so i hope this is helping you to just i uh, understand the basic idea of plant breeding uh, thank you